Hello students, let's do another gizmo. This one is called Crumple Zones. So it should already be added to your class, but if not, you can go to the Find Gizmos. And if you start to type in Crumple Zones, here's the one. And we'll click on it to launch the gizmo. Here we go. Um, what you want to do, click on the Lesson Info, and you want to go to the Student Exploration Sheet as a guide. Uh, you may also already have a copy of a Google Doc for your assignment, but you can always click on the Student Exploration Sheet, and what this does is it gives you a little bit of background information. It gives you some vocabulary. Some of these words you should recognize, some we'll get to a little bit later on. This might be a gizmo that we return to at another time. And then we have our instructions and places to record answers to questions and data for the different activities. This one has uh, four different activities, so we'll break this up into different groups as we're going through. So back on this page over here for our gizmo, I'm going to turn the volume off for this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so here is our gizmo. I actually think the bottom will be cut off a little bit, but you should be able to see enough. Um, this part right here, this page is the design page, and we basically are going to have different uh, crashes and then uh, get to see the results of those crashes and how these different parameters affect the people that are in the car. And as far as the different cars that you have, that's a uh, pull down menu for the different body styles, sedan, SUV, you can see it changes over here, and then we have a subcompact car. I'm just gonna go back to the sedan for this. And we've got crumple zone length. Remember we talked about crumple zone increasing the time of impact to decrease the force. You can see you can make that longer or shorter. The rigidity of the crumple zone, right? This is in kilonewtons, how much force is needed to make this crumple. You can make it more rigid. You can see it's kind of getting more thick and then it gets thinner over here. And then that's this part. And then the safety cell rigidity, that's the part where the person, the occupants of the car will be. And you can see that you can also increase the rigidity, right? The stiffness of that. Other options that you have is you can add a seat belt. You can see it appears over here. Again, you can make that more stiff or not. And you can even add an airbag. Uh, when you click the airbag button, then you lose the steering wheel that's over here. Ideally, if you have an airbag, you'll hit the bag instead of the steering wheel never good to hit the steering wheel right and again you can add rigidity or take that away from the airbag as well so you basically have these different parameters to set up over here and then what you do is you go to this next tab the crash test and on this crash test you can choose if it's going to be one or two cars you can also choose the initial speed of the car and it tells you uh, the, the different criteria that you pick down here then what you do is you click play button and this will go and it will hit, in this case, a solid object, a wall that's down here. If you do two cars, you can see you've changed it and now you've got another car that's gonna have an impact with this one, a head-on collision, and you can change the parameters of that second car. You can change the initial speed. You can also change the mass of that car. So I'll just go to the one car for this example and then you hit the play button there it goes. That's pretty terrible. A lot of broken things. You can also replay it in slow motion. I don't think there's a need to do that for this one. You can see exactly what happened. And then we can go back and we can get some of the data. So if we click on this table tab, here's the data from this collision. You've got time in seconds, the velocity of the car, the acceleration of the car, the velocity of the crash test dummy, its acceleration, and then the force in kilonewtons that was applied to the crash test. Remember, this is simulating what would happen to an actual person. So ideally, you want this number to be as small as possible. You can clear it. You can also export it if you want. I don't think you need to for what we're going to do in our class. If we click on results, now we have a summary, and it tells you a little bit about the crash. And then down here, it tells you what happened to the person. So it says, dummy hits the steering wheel, which we can see in the picture, and then this, death by trauma to head and torso. So that is very bad. Obviously your job is to make sure that the likelihood of survival is 
obviously bigger than zero, but as high as you can get it. So when you start changing the parameters of the design and then you get to test those parameters, you can check to see if your results from those parameters had an impact. You can also look at different graphs of the scenario and you have different types of graphs. So in this case here, we've got a displacement, but you can change it to force, deceleration, force on the dummy, force on the car, and these will all be versus time, right? You're just changing the Y axis over here. If we go back to the design, again, you can change some of the parameters. You can add a seat belt, you can add an airbag. Again, you can change the parameters of these. I'm just kind of randomly going right now. When you go to the crash test, the other thing that you have an option for is a collision avoidance system. Many newer cars have this. My car has that as well, my man van, high performance vehicle. We can also put that on there if you like. And we can even do a two car collision. So we'll just play this one just for one more. Slow motion. We can go to the table. We can see our, our data table. Then we can go to our results. We'll go to the summary. Likelihood of survival, 70% for a head-on collision. Not great, but also not terrible either. And then we've got no injuries. Dummy hit the airbag. Did not hit the steering wheel. That's always worst case scenario. Uh, it tells you how much the crumble zone deformed, how much the safety cell deformed. So for this particular gizmo, you're basically an engineer for these different car designs. And your job is to go through the student exploration sheet and see if you can design and then test a car that will protect the occupants that are inside. I will see you in class.